Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Back by popular demand is Dr. Steve Lewenda. He's been on the show before to tell his amazing story of transformation, losing, losing, not losing, losing a ton of weight when he learned about the whole food plant-based diet. He is a doctor at Kaiser Permanente where he has programs where he inspires patients and teaches them to follow this and is having absolutely incredible results. But he's back today in a different capacity, which you'll understand when you see what he's wearing. You see, I don't follow a lot of people on Instagram, but I love his posts because he posts his food and everything is delicious looking, nutritious, healthy, I love his photos and I've been begging him for months to please come and do a cooking demo and he agreed and today he is going to be making Dan Dan noodles. He's calling this a zoodle party. Please welcome Chef Dr. Steve Lewenda. It's so nice to see you again. So nice to see you AJ and uh, it, I, <laughs> I was, it was my understanding that this was a dress rehearsal. I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I guess we're live. Huh? We're live. Let's do it. All right. Good to see you AJ. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. And an honor, especially today, we're going to be cooking. And, you know, I, I've, I've done some cooking classes before with our team at, at our Kaiser. Uh, but this is the first time I've streamed uh, something like this live. So I'm excited and, again, honored. Well, great. You know, so, if, if you keep it just under an hour, we can put it on your Instagram, on my Instagram. I'll be happy to give oh, you awesome. a download. Awesome. You can show it to your patients. Well, but me, I love the sure. fact that you practice what you preach. So uh, Dr. Lewenda, what I'm going to do now is put us in gallery mode. I'm going to take sure. myself so off camera. So now you can be side by side with your sure. And just a, just a quick reminder, if anyone hasn't seen me before, or met me, you know, as AJ, as Chef AJ mentioned, I did lose a lot of weight. Here's a picture of me before my both of my parents suffered with terrible chronic diseases. My dad, especially with diabetes, having lost both of his legs. So there's been a lot of personal um, tragedy and a family tragedy that has inspired me. And um, this has really turned my life around personally and professionally. And I'm so, um, it, it's been so, it's so rewarding as a physician to be able to help people this way with food and give them the power to take some control over their health. And so, with that in mind, I have to admit, I have to be honest, I've always loved eating AJ. That's always, <laughs> and the, the great thing about this lifestyle is, especially for me, is I still love eating. And I realized if you're going to, um, if you want to take control of your health, you really have to take control of the ingredients, right? Because if you, if you eat everything processed, everything in a package or everything from a restaurant, you're, you're basically allowing them, those companies to, to cook for you. And you, as you know, AJ, very well, I mean, these companies add so much sugar, fat, and salt to everything, not to mention all the animal products and so forth and so on. And so, um, so even, you know, even if something's vegan, as you know very well, it more likely than not in a restaurant or in a package is very processed. So I realized that if I'm going to really take control of my health, I have to take control of the ingredients, which means cooking the food, or at least my wife, at least one of us. And the other thing too, is that if I'm going to enjoy it, you know, then that means taking an active role in creating things, which to be honest, I enjoy it. I really do. And I hope that that comes across today. And I hope you all enjoy it as well. Because if you take control of your health, you love what you eat, and it's not too hard, it really isn't. It's a win-win, it's a win-win situation. And, um, you know, hopefully, uh, this recipe actually has some tempeh in it. And speaking of winning, you know, we can say that, um, you know, at the end of at the end of a hard day's work, you know, you can you can celebrate with, you know, a, a phrase like a uh, Winner, winner, tempeh dinner, right? And that's my humor for the day. Okay. In any case, let's get started. <laughs> I this love is, that. Winner, winner, tempeh dinner. That's hilarious. There you go. There you go. And by the way, this, this dish was kind of inspired. You know, one of the things I like to do and I like to teach is if you're looking for both, you know, health and pleasure, as far as the pleasure is concerned, think of some things that you already enjoy and try to kind of mimic them, but in a healthy plant-based way. So this is kind of a mix of a whole bunch of different things I've loved from, from Chinese food, whether it be orange chicken, whether it be stir fry noodles. I've had a dish called, there is a dish called Dan Dan noodles, but they're, um, they're kind of sweet and sour, spicy noodles with, with meat. And uh, in this case, there's no meat, of course. You'll see what we have. And um, the other thing um, that inspired me to make this as well is there was a local, or oh, there still is, a local, I think it's like a, you know, Mongolian barbecue place where essentially you put all these ingredients into a bowl 
and then you give it to the chef and the chef basically stir fries it on the spot. And this particular restaurant, they actually can stir fry with water, but of course you never know for sure, like what's on their, their pan and so forth and so on. And so I decided, you know what, this looks like so much fun. Why am I not doing this at home? I need to buy myself a wok and just throw a bunch of things in and, and experiment and have fun with it. And that's how this dish kind of got created. And the other thing about this dish too, like, like any stir fry is that um, there's no such thing as wrong ingredients or right ingredients. I mean, essentially any, if you want to just buy some frozen to make things simple, some frozen veggies and just literally throw them in the wok with some seasonings and, and, and uh, sauces that I'm going to show you in a moment that works too. I mean, there's so many ways to do this. You, this can be like literally five or 10 minutes. In this case, it's going to take a little longer because I have kind of more ingredients maybe than usual. And, but in any case, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I like to throw a little water on the pan just, or um, yeah, just to get started here. You know what, Dr. Lawenda, maybe instead of Dan Dan noodles, we can call these Steve Steve noodles. There you go. There you go. So we're starting off with some water because we're no oil, of course, some onions and mushrooms. And AJ, you have the recipe. I assume you're sharing it with everybody. I sure am. I put it in the show notes, but you can only see show notes on YouTube. So Facebook peeps, please hop over to YouTube. Sure. Subscribe to me and watch there. Yeah. It's more fun. Awesome. Now this is, I don't know if you can see this. This is freeze dried ginger and garlic. Now you might wonder why are we not using fresh here? To be honest, there's, we just, I don't want to say we cheat, but we just like things simple sometimes. And we happen to have, um, I'll show you what we have. Freeze dried garlic. I'm just showing you how it comes. Freeze dried ginger. I don't know if you can see, there you go. In any case, it just makes it easy for us. So, but I love fresh and we use fresh sometimes too. Okay, so this is gonna be cooking here. I just, I'm gonna wait for the onions to basically become translucent, which can take, eh, give or take five minutes. So we'll let this cook. And you know, one of the things that I love about eating this way is learning about not just how to cook with these foods, but also the, nutrition, the nutritional benefits or health benefits of all these foods. And you know, most of the foods I'm gonna share with you today are very low in calorie density, very high in you know, nutrient density, they're, they're very high in nutrients. Um, onions um, have something called quercetin, which is one of the most powerful antioxidants known. It's been shown to, or it's been associated with um, less cold viruses, flu viruses, less severe infections. So it seems to be very powerful for the immune system. So it actually caused a, a bit of a craze during COVID. A lot of people were buying quercetin uh, supplements, but you can actually get it naturally. Um, and again, onions are one of the best sources. So, and I, I love onions just from a sort of a culinary or pleasure standpoint, because I love that little kick that they give. And I love the, um, that, that, the crunch too, the texture of them. So, and I don't know about you guys, but I hope the, the video is coming across well here, but I just love, I don't know what it is. I just love stir frying. I just love looking at it and watching it cook. It's just fun. It's like, uh, I don't know what it is. It, there's just this connection to the food that, that I have at least that I enjoy. And so I even love the sound. I know that's weird but I love the sound of it cooking too. Okay, in any case, and you may not be able to smell it, but the ginger and the garlic, I mean, what better smell than those two? Okay, let's see. Oh, and then mushrooms. Let's talk a little bit about mushrooms uh, for a moment. Um, first of all, mushrooms have kind of a umami type flavor, which if, for those of you who are new to that word, it's essentially like a meaty flavor and of course they're chewy. So a lot of people use mushrooms to replace meat if they miss it, or even if you don't miss it, it's just delicious whether you miss meat or not. Uh, in this case, uh, what's great about this too is that, I mean, not only the, um, of course the flavor and the fact that it's, it's not meat, but the other thing is that this is also um, nutrient dense, low in calorie density, good for weight loss and they have a lot of uh, soluble fiber. There's a type of solu soluble fiber called beta-glucan, which is really good for lowering cholesterol and lowering blood sugar. So, I mean, you know, it, it, it's fascinating when you read about each ingredient in this dish, but not just this dish, but in so many dishes, there's so much fascinating science about 
every plant food. And you know, every plant food seems to have hundreds, if not thousands of substances in them that we don't even know much, uh, not, uh, we know some about, but there seems like we know, there's more we don't know than, than what we do know. And it's just fascinating for me, I don't know about you guys, but to learn about all this. And, and then to, for me, I enjoy, I enjoy eating this food so much more when I know what it's doing for my body. And especially when I think about my parents, especially my dad and what he went through, what I was suffering with before and all of my patients, it just, it makes eating so much more meaningful knowing that your food is your medicine. Okay. Anyway, you can see this is getting nice and softer starting to. And so, um, you know, I could almost eat, I wouldn't just eat that. Well, maybe I would actually, I could probably just eat this. Not that that would be a whole meal, but it just looks so delicious already. Okay, so um, let's see. Next step is going to be the peppers. Now, I don't know if you can see these very well, but I love the color with these bell peppers. Here's some orange and red. I'm gonna throw those in. Oh, hey, uh, Dr. Lewenda, there's a question. Yeah. If I wanna freeze my own garlic or ginger, how would you recommend I do that? Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, th these are freeze dried. They're not um, frozen, they're freeze dried. And we don't obviously freeze dry them ourselves, but um, I'm not really sure to be, but actually, to be honest with you, we have frozen, we have frozen garlic and ginger just straight from, I mean, without any preparation. I don't know, AJ, if you have any tips on that, but we've done it. Um, I'm gonna I, add, I, I, I freeze it, like when my garlic, yeah. the expiration date, cause I'm too lazy to buy it in the bulb. So I buy it peeled. And when the expiration day is due, I'll freeze it just in, you know, a little piece of, uh, it's called zip top bags. It's like these uh, reusable Ziploc bags. Sure. And then with the ginger, what I do is I peel it and then I cut it into about one inch chunks, which is the size I normally use. And I freeze it all the time. Great. Okay, now I'm going to add the tempeh. And tempeh, I'm going to talk a little bit about. You can see that I cube them into kind of like half inch uh, size here. And I'm going to add, um, I'll talk about tempeh in a moment. I'm going to also add water chestnuts. I love these because of the texture, the crunch, they're high in fiber and water, which means they're um, low in calorie density, also good for weight loss. I mean, all the, most of these things are very low in calorie density. This is one tablespoon of coconut aminos, which by the way, um, so for those of you who are not familiar with coconut aminos, co coconut aminos are basically basically a, a way to replace soy sauce which, with much less sodium. Um, the particular brand that I'm using is here and it's about 70-ish percent lower in sodium. Now, if you wanted to make this dish completely SOS free, and just to be clear, this, this dish is um, refined sugar-free and oil-free, but it is it does have some salt, but it's much lower in sodium than what, what you would get um, you know, from a restaurant or from a package. But if you wanted to make it completely SOS-free, I have two suggestions right away. One is this teriyaki balsamic from California Balsamic, which I know, AJ, you are a big fan of. That's exactly what I would do. Yes, and the other one is an Asian everything sauce from Well Your World which I know you're also familiar with this brand as well. So these are two options. I have not personally, I've tried these sauces. They're both excellent. Um, but I have, there is a, a sauce that I'm gonna show you. Oh, I might as well show you now. This, this for me is so good. Um, I love it so much that I just don't wanna give it up. It's sweet chili sauce from the Date Lady. One tablespoon of this sauce has 67 milligrams of sodium, which, relative to soy sauce is oh my is god about, that's it's, nothing so a it's soy almost sauce nothing. has like uh like 300 or something in a teaspoon doesn't it yeah actually you're right uh that's exactly right so it's about you know whatever that is that's i don't know eight or nine times more it's in the soy sauce. and she was on yeah. the show recently and she knows who you are and she appreciates <laughs> your support sure well no i i this particular sauce so uh, now you see, uh, you see the color coming in here, you know, with the peppers and everything, you see everything cooking well. And of course, no oil, you don't need oil, as you can see. Um, what was I gonna say? I was gonna talk a little bit about the tempeh. Um, so tempeh, for those of you who are not familiar, it is essentially minimally processed. It's actually, they use the whole soybeans and it's um, essentially a soybean cake. Now, so it is true that you can have your cake and eat your tempeh too. Um, 
they You're call it a up cadence. With lots of great ones today. Well, hey, you know, I don't know. I, but uh, I'm going to keep my day job to, just in case. Pays the bills. Um, what was I going to say? The tempeh, so whole soybeans, and it is a fermented food, which may help somewhat as a bit of a probiotic, although I think, I think there's a bit of pasteurization that may take place before they sell it. Although you can also make it homemade and so forth and so on. But either way, it's good, it's good for your gut because of all the fiber one way or another, um, which acts as a prebiotic. Um, but nonetheless, for those of you who are afraid of soy, and by the way, you do not have to eat soy. And, by the, and the other thing is this dish does not require tempeh. You can either use more mushrooms or you can just add more veggies. Um, which by the way, speaking of more veggies, we have kale coming in, in a little bit here, but um, in any case, uh, why tempeh? Or what, what is it about tempeh and soy that I wanted to share? So first of all, if you're worried about breast cancer, cause that's a big concern, the studies actually show, um, because people, people worry that, um, that soy has estrogen in it, but actually it's plant estrogen, which is different. It's not animal estrogen and it actually, the estrogen in soy, which is called a phytoestrogen, because that's the, that's the term, phyto means plant, it actually blocks human estrogen. So it's kind of like an estrogen, more of an estrogen blocker than it is an actual estrogen. And if you're worried about actual estrogen, you know, animal foods, especially dairy, but also other you know, meats and so forth, have estrogen and, and testosterone too, for that matter, because they are animals. And so animals have hormones. So and studies show that soy foods, whole soy foods, um, actually reduce the risk of breast cancer in most studies. The other thing is that most studies show that um, uh, soy foods reduce the risk of heart disease, lower cholesterol. And the other thing is that even though you don't need to worry about protein on a uh, plant-based diet, if, you're, if you are trying to get more for whatever reason, if you're an athlete, or if you're just worried about losing any muscle mass or anything like that, um, tempeh is one of the, and soy foods in general are one of the highest sources of protein. But not only that, tempeh happens to be one of the highest sources of calcium and iron. And speaking of iron, you don't really have to worry about iron on a plant-based diet for the, I mean, if you're eating a well-balanced plant-based diet. But one thing, one little tidbit is that um, vitamin C, which by the way, you may, I didn't get to this yet, but the peppers here are one of the richest sources of vitamin C in a plant-based diet. In fact, they have more vitamin C than oranges do. And the, what's great about vitamin C and iron is that when you eat vitamin C and iron together, the vitamin C helps you absorb more of the iron. So it actually makes it more available to you. Okay, so now I'm gonna add, this is the sweet chili sauce. And you can, you can use as little or as much of this as you want. I'm going to use four tablespoons, but honestly, I just love it. So, uh, but if you want to use two or three, and, and by, I should also mention, by the way, that this recipe, the amounts that I've um, listed, this should make enough for two people, really. Um, so um, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, four tablespoons sounds like a lot. Well, remember, it's really two if, if you're thinking of it in terms of, um, you know, for each serving. Okay, so here we go. Look at that. Doesn't that look great? It looks amazing. I don't know how it looks. It's yeah. so colorful. It looks amazing. Yeah, I love it. And I, oh, one other thing I forgot. Huh, how could I forget? If anybody knows me well, you know that I love spice. And so I'm going to add some chili paste and I'll show you what this is in a moment. Now you can add as much of this as you want. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm adding less right now than I usually do. This is one tablespoon. And it's this product, by the way. And I should, I should mention something about this product. This is called Sambal Olek. Um, also very low in sodium, especially relative to soy sauce. However, you can actually make this chili paste completely salt-free. It, it's just basically red peppers and vinegar. Um, so it's really easy to make. I just haven't made it. You know, again, I, I'm a busy guy. What can I tell you? But maybe someday I'll make a large jar of it and then I'll get rid of that stuff. But in any case. It's, uh, do you, is the uh, freeze dried ginger that you use, is it peeled? Yes. There's a question why to peel ginger. I peel it just because it's it's just so rough, the skin. Not that there's not nutrients, but it's kind of rough to chew, you know? Sure. Yeah, I don't know, actually. It's a great question. I've, 
I would assume it is, but I, I honestly don't know for sure. Next thing I'm gonna add here is a little bit of orange juice. You might wonder why, why orange juice? Well, you know, honestly, a couple reasons. Um, one is that it's, it's sweet, of course, and it does have vitamin C, but also I just find that adding a little citrus to a stir fry just gives it a little unique uh, kick to it. And I can't really explain it, but you know, a lot of people love orange chicken or pineapple chicken. And so like a little bit of fruit, um, uh, a little bit of fruit juice just adds a really nice touch to it. You can almost hardly notice it, but it's there. It's kind of subtle and you could add as much or as little of that, of that as you want. And I noticed, by the way, my, some of my tempeh cubes have crumbled a little bit and that's absolutely fine. Um, if you're worried about them crumbling, um, you know, you can make them a little bigger. I don't mind either way. I, um, one other thing I wanted to mention about tempeh, if you've never cooked with it or if you've never eaten it, is that it's chewy. Um, some people like that texture and it has a bit of a nutty flavor, but the, the nice thing too is that it basically takes up the flavor of whatever it is you cook it in. So um, in this case, it's not really gonna have much of a distinct flavor, but I suppose in many ways, it's kind of like, it's kind of like meat. Most people don't eat meat plain, they season it. Um, so in any case, um, I'm gonna add now the, uh, this bad, bad guy right here. Can you guys see what that is? Anyone wanna guess what that is online? Some kind of greens? That, yes, it is some kind of greens. This is no, none other than kale. And why am I adding kale? Well, many reasons. First of all, why not? <laughs> but you know, kale is considered by many to be the, I don't know, the, um, the, the most nutrient, one of the most nutrient dense, if not the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. It's just loaded with so many vitamins and it actually has some two unique ones called, I can never remember their names, lutein and zeaxanthin. Say those 10, say zeaxanthin 10 times fast. But those are most notable because they seem to be the most protective against some of the eye diseases like macular degeneration and also diabetic retinopathy. So if you have diabetes and you're worried about your eyesight, even if you're not worried about your eyesight, eat lots of kale. And you know, the nice thing about kale is you could pretty much add it to anything and especially like something like this, it, if you don't like, like for example, I don't really enjoy eating it plain by itself. It's a little bitter for me, but in this, I hardly notice it. I mean, there's so much flavor in here, uh, which I'm sure you can imagine just what, looking at it and thinking about it, that you hardly notice it. And so I love sneaking greens into things and there's so many ways to sneak them in. I'm sure AJ, you talk about that often. Absolutely. So there's a question. Are you sauteing on the low heat? And if so, is it to retain the nutrients? And your patient says your program is excellent. He's watching. His name is T. Michael. Oh, awesome. Hi there, T. Michael. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, this is actually medium heat. I find low heat is just not enough, but I don't, I don't like to do high heat either. I don't like to overcook things, but I find medium heat works best. So, and I'm just, I'm just stirring this, letting it kind of sit a little bit, letting the kale wilt. And, um, but honestly, this is just about ready. Um, oh, uh, well, I say it's just about ready, except for the, uh, the star of the show, which is the zoodles. Now, zoodles, in other words, zucchini noodles, let me show you right here. Let's see, I'm gonna show you here. Can you guys see? Okay, so I, I spiralize these by hand today. I actually have, where is it? It's right here. You know, we used to have kind of a big contraption to do this, but I found this little thing, I think it's by OXO, really handy. I can just go like this and they come right out. I mean, all I need are, two, all I need are my two hands and I could do it. And now if you don't have good hands, you have arthritis or something, you know, you can certainly buy, you can buy Zoodles pre, um, pre spiral, you know, already spiralized. You can, um, there's all kinds of food processors and machines could, that can do it now. So, but I, I don't mind, I kind of enjoy doing it. Now, why zoodles? Well, first of all, we all know, you know, pasta, a lot of pasta is refined. It's uh, lacking fiber. 
It's more calorie dense. In fact, Zoodles, you'll probably appreciate this, AJ. Zoodles are nine times uh, or one ninth the calorie density of most pasta because there's so much there's so much fiber and water in them. And the nice thing about this too is, you know, I don't, I probably wouldn't, I mean, I could eat these plain, but mixing them in with this, it just, they soak up the flavor. So I'm just gonna literally throw them in. Now I'm gonna use my special tongs here. I'm just gonna mix everything up. What I like to do, you know, some people like to serve um, a sauce on top of zoodles. In other words, raw zoodles, not even cooked the zoodles. Some people steam their zoodles. There's many ways to cook zoodles, but I love just cooking them in with whatever it is, you know, I'm gonna to top them with, just kind of mix them all together. So this way they're heating up, they're softening, they're soaking up the flavors. That's what I like to do. Do you cook dinner every night for your family? Uh, no, not every night. Um, so, you know, and to be honest, uh, this is another thing I wanted to mention, that, which is, I appreciate that, that question because that reminded me, I was gonna share this, is that a lot of what we do is batch cooking which I know you teach and so many of us who are helping patients and clients teach, we do a lot of that. This is like this kind of a meal right here. This is not really batch cooking. This is more like, okay, my wife, Patty and I will share this. And this is just a one-time deal. So I'll make this maybe on a weekend or when I have a, a day that's not so busy. And um, I mean, it's not, it's not really that hard to make or anything, but, but most days we, we eat the things that we batch cooked. So, it's not as, it's not as fun as this necessarily, to, uh, but you know, the instant pot or a slow cooker, we use those. I mean, um, I'm looking at your Instagram page now and everything looks like a restaurant meal. You've got some chocolate well, strawberries. You've got what looks like tostadas. I mean, your food looks like restaurants. Well, I, it's the only thing that know, I like better than your food in your Instagram feed is your dog. <laughs> I can, I can, you know what? I can bring her on here in a moment. Thank and you. You know, I, to I, I gotta be honest. I, I'm just being completely honest here. I've always loved food. I've always loved eating out at restaurants. And so I like to have fun with it. And if it, if I like, if I can share it with people and inspire them to cook something or especially something healthy like this, then, then I've, I feel like I've done my, done my job. So, and you know, it's so much more, as I mentioned earlier, so much more rewarding to um, help people take control of their health with food rather than with pills. I don't, I still prescribe pills, of course. I know, and I believe that they do serve a role, but they don't treat the underlying cause of disease, of course. And so they may slow down the disease, they may reduce your risk. But, uh, you know, it's like if you were smoking cigarettes, you wouldn't want to just rely on an inhaler to, to, you know, help you with your smoker's cough, because that that may help temporarily, but if that's, but that smoking is doing massive damage all throughout your body. And the same thing with food. I mean, kind of like all the drugs that treat diabetes and heart disease, they don't address the root cause. They just they make your numbers look better. So. Of course. No, that's true. I mean, uh, it's. In okay. any case, I think this is just about done. I'm going to, I'm going to plate it here. Oops. Great. Everybody. Bernadette wants to know Dr. Lewenda. If, oh, well, first of all, what's your medical specialty? And do you educate sure. medical peers to teach this to their patients too? Thank you. So I'm a family medicine doctor, that's primary care. And so I see people for just about everything. And um, what was the second part of my teaching? Yeah, so I have given many lectures to peers and I gotta be honest with you, just like, um, I'm gonna plate this here, just like the public, you know, some are, some are more open to this than others. And so I've had many of my peers become really passionate about it and kind of join me on this journey and others, not so much and others in between. So it's just like, it's just like family and friends, you know, it's, it's kind of a little bit random, but it's, it's great though, to see within the medical field that there, there is a movement and it is getting bigger and bigger every year. There's the plantrician project project. There's the American college of lifestyle medicine, which I am now, proud to say I'm board certified. And so there's, it, it's happening. And, uh, but there's still a lot of controversy and politics around food. And, and so it, it's gonna take time, I think, for the whole system to really um, completely transform. But there's pockets of us out there who are doing this kind of work. And it's, 
it's making a difference and it's catching on. So do you bring your lunch to work or do you eat I do. at the hospital? Yes, I do. I actually have a really big, I love it, a really big igloo. I'm going to turn this off. Here, let me, I have some, by the way, I have some green, um, bear with me a sec here. I have some green onion, which I love topping. It just looks nice. I love topping um, some of my dishes with it, but I like the way it looks. I don't know if you can see, can you see that? Yeah, it's gorgeous. I see. Yeah. I don't know whether. Okay. Oh In any case, oh, that one looks other like thing. A feast. Yeah, you know, I forgot. I like to add a little. Oh, yeah, Jesse wants to know what brand is your wok? Oh, sure. Um, I have to hang on just a moment. Here. Like a nice. I forgot to add. Oh, I made a mess. Out and he looks like a nice man. Yeah, eat your colors, absolutely. I forgot one more thing. I add, I like to add a little extra chili <laughs> chili paste on top for good measure. It, it, I think it dresses it up, but also I just love the spice too. So I don't know if you can see now. I don't know how how well that comes across. But in any case, um, the qu the question. What was the question again? Um, Sorry. Brand is your walk. Oh, brand. Um, I have to look it up. I don't remember. I did buy it online. I can, oh, my, you know what? I can put it in the comments um, or send it to you, AJ. I don't remember, but I, I know it was an Italian. I don't know if it actually was made in Italy. Nowadays, things are not necessarily made where you think they're made, as you know, but um, supposedly it's an Italian brand. It's nonstick. And I like, I like it because it's supposedly free of all those toxic things like, you know, PTFE and PFOA and all that. So and it works really well. You can see, I mean, for the most part, my food is not sticking, as you can see, so. Now, um, now that you're done with the recipe, do you want me to just put it back in speaker mode to have you big or do you sure. want it? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. I brought myself back on. And I, you, there we go. And I should, I just want to share too, with, uh, this probably goes without saying, but you can tell that this whole thing took, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes or so, but, the, um, and it could have been a little faster too, but the, the idea is that, you know, if you were going to go to a restaurant or even even to fast food, you know, there's this notion that fast food is fast. And I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some truth to that. But I always I like to share with my patients that because I used to have fast food just about every day. My, the old me, you have to drive there, which can be 10 minutes. Let's say you have to wait in a line, which could be another five to 10 minutes. And then you have to drive back, assuming that you're like, for example, what I was doing is uh, I was having it for lunch at work. So I would drive there 10, actually, let me back up. I'd walk to, I have to walk to my car in the parking lot, which is five minutes, then drive another 10 minutes, then wait in line another five, 10 minutes, then drive back, then walk in. And the point is, is it takes 30, 40 minutes just to get food sometimes from a restaurant. And so when I think of people saying, oh, I don't have the time to cook or, you know, everybody does. And I think a lot of that is unfortunately, and I think you're well aware of this, it's we, we don't always want to be honest with ourselves. So we, kind of cover them up with excuses that make some sense to us. Like, oh, gee, it's more convenient, it's faster, this and that. Um, when actually a lot of that is the, the pleasure, the, the addictive nature of some of these fast foods, that's probably more the driver than, um, than the time factor. Um, and it's you're not cooking. I mean, there's, it saves so much time. So um, any case, you, was there a, another question that was- I'm sure there are questions. Grant, hear about the sure. lady that was uh, kept police for two hours on a high-speed chase and they caught her because she stopped at McDonald's for chicken nuggets. Oh my gosh, I did not. So your addiction can actually get you arrested. I will look for <laughs> questions for the chat, but I'm just curious, what do you take sure. for lunch when you bring your lunch and what do you have for breakfast? Oh yes, oh gosh, um, I know what, <laughs> not trying to be funny. I know what you want me to say about breakfast, I'm just kidding, but actually there's no there's no, um, what, I'll be what honest. What do I want you to no, say about breakfast? I'm just kidding. No, I'm, I'm joking. I know, no, I know what you teach. I know what you teach. No, but I only I teach, teach it to people that are overweight and food addicts. Everybody else can I call know, I know, fruit I know. and smoothies. I'm more for the very specific population for whom everything yeah, else you know, is To be honest, I, and again, completely honest, I don't really have a set breakfast. There's some days where I'm wanting something sweet and there are other days where I want something savory. And I will have sometimes like hot, a hot, savory meal for breakfast. I will have, in other words, we do so much batch cooking 
that when I end up taking, I end up taking like two or three meals with me to work because sometimes I'll literally have breakfast, lunch, and dinner at work because by the time I get home, sometimes I get home around seven and I don't want to be eating too late. So I will bring, I mean, I'll bring, uh, definitely bring fruit. I may bring oatmeal, not always. I may bring a salad. I may bring um, something hot like a chili or a curry. I may bring some grains. Um, let's see, what else would I bring? Um, I mean, those are the kinds of things I bring. Sometimes I bring extra of some of those. Um, but again, I don't really have, I don't really have a set um, meal plan that it just kind of depends on what we made that week. And to be honest with you, we get, um, we'll make something for a couple weeks and then maybe we'll get a little tired of that and then we'll make something else. And we, our freezer, I'm not going to go out there right now. We have an extra freezer in our garage and it is full of things that we batch cooked, which is really, that's, that's the name of the game because it becomes your fast food. If your freezer is full, um, the idea is you can just go in there and literally just say, Oh gee, do I want chili? Do I want, um, split pea soup do i want a curry and whatever you feel like having you just grab those and take those with you to work in my case and that becomes my fast food and uh and then you know when we do make uh grains or oats steel cut oats it's batch cooked and so we've got oatmeal and grains and all kinds of things like that that are batch cooked and then salad of course i have a very big i know aj you say this all the time make the salad as bigger or as big as your head or bigger than so I have a very big, um, I agree with that, by the way. And I have a very big salad. Uh, I don't have it here with me, but it's in the cabinet, but a very big bowl. And I'll just throw in a big salad and bring that with me to work. And um, So typically it's these kinds of things, but I um, hope that helps. But what I, you know, again, what I used to do, I used to have fast food literally almost every day, the old man. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. So has there ever been a day you've forgotten your lunch? And if so, is there anything healthy at all to eat at your hospital? Oh, yeah. Good question. Um, rarely do I forget. <laughs> um, but I have I have uh, maybe once or twice there. We don't we do have food. at. First of all, I don't work at a hospital, I work at a medical uh, office building. We do have a place where there's food. But to be honest, it's not it's not ideal. But there are some local places. AJ, I know you're very familiar with Sharkies. We do have a Sharkies close by. And actually, I, um, I know that you have some items on the menu for those who live in Southern California. You can get an AJ bowl or an AJ burrito. Well, there's one, um, there's one Sharkies nearby where I work in, Palm, in Palmdale. I work in Lancaster, but Palmdale is right next door. And I, was, I custom uh, ordered something so many times that they just event. And then I told so many people about it. I told so many of my patients about it that they eventually decided to put it on their menu in Palmdale, but it's only on the Palmdale menu. So if you, What's it called the flying, to, is it called the flying Luenda burrito? Not exactly. Something like that. It's called the Luenda bowl or Luenda burrito, but actually I don't even know if they know about the burrito anymore because most of, most of my patients, I tell them to order Luenda bowl, skip the tortilla. But so that's my claim to fame is I do have one item, uh, on a, <laughs> in a restaurant with my name on it. Uh, but other than that, I mean, what else is it? There, there's, there are a couple other places that are not the best, but the, I'll, in a pinch, they'll work for me. But to be honest, I'd probably go to Sharpies if I didn't have anything. Right. Uh, Cheryl says, what salad dressings does the doctor like to use? Great question. Um, I do like well, depends on my mood. It depends on, I have different themes of salads. You know, in fact, this is kind of a tip I'm sharing with you all is that a lot of people think that salad, when they, especially when they start this lifestyle, they might think that salad is boring. And I might've used, I, maybe I used to think that way. I mean, the old me, but now I don't think of salad as salad. I think of every salad is potentially very unique and there's many different themes. Or so for example, I love taco salad. I love taco salad. I could probably have taco salad just about every day. And um, so when I have taco salad, I'm putting on there, oh my gosh. I mean, it, it just depends, but I'm putting on there pico de gallo and may, sometimes guacamole, sometimes not. Um, I have this thing that I make with the taco salad where I'll take some hot sauce. I love hot sauce. Um, and for, first of all, you can just use in a taco salad, you could just use hot sauces or pico de gallo, but I will add a little bit of, um, a little bit of tahini to it to make it like a creamy spicy sauce 
Um, and what I love about that is that there's, you don't even really need a blender or anything. You can just like whip it up with a spoon. So I've, I've used that with taco salads. I mean, that's delicious for me. Uh, I've made green salsas with tomatillos before for taco salads. Um, for other dressings, um, sometimes I'll even use, well, this right here. I have actually, I think I have, I have two that I use often in salads. One is the teriyaki balsamic. The other one that I like a lot is the Italian one, the seven herb Italian, I think is what it's called. Yeah, so those I'll are my use, favorites too. That's fan. That's that's uh, good. I think like, dressing. Yeah, yeah, and I and I and I'll and I and I still like a lot of. Um, I do like some creamy dressings. I will um, I will use some tahini with uh, lemon and garlic, uh, and sometimes I'll add herbs and spices to that as well, like Italian seasoning, or I'll add dill to make it like a ranch. Sometimes I will use this little sweet chili sauce as a dressing. I mean, just depends what kind of mood I'm in. But I, I've got many options. So, and it just, so, and I'm always trying new things. Are there any plant-based dishes that specifically your family enjoys that you make? Uh, you know what? Yes and no. <laughs> so when we say my family, the kids are, they, they kind of are, they have their own individual tastes. Um, so like one kid likes one thing, one likes the other. We're trying to kind of merge everybody together. So we all like the same things. Or, or try to find things we all like. I can't say that they're at the moment. Um, well, and this is not really this. I don't know that this is necessarily a plant-based dish, but but we will make um, like the, as far as like the, all four of us, which is a challenge to be honest. <laughs> getting my wife and I to like the same thing that's easy. That's very easy. But getting all four of us, I would say probably the thing that we all like in common would be. Like we use these um, pastas that are not, um, not like, uh, what am I trying to say? Not wheat pastas, but the bean pastas or lentil pasta. So we'll make like a, a pasta like that, um, you know, and, and that's, I know that that's kind of a plain thing, but you know, they're, the kids are still kind of little and they're still um, exploring different things, but they, unfortunately they won't eat this, not yet. <laughs> um, it's a little too spicy for them and a little too busy. But one of my kids really loves mushrooms, the older one. So like if I was making this, I might maybe on the side cook up some mushrooms. Oh, there is one other thing I forgot. I, I, I don't know why I forgot this, but our kids do love tofu. So just about anything I make with tofu, they'll eat. And uh, they love sweet potatoes. They love air fries. I mean, there's all kinds of things that we'll eat together. But as far as like a dish like this, we're not quite, quite there yet. Um, who knows? Wow. But I, I'm, I have, my tastes are a little different, I think, than, than most people. I love everything spicy and, you know, I call this a stir fry party because there's just so many different textures and flavors and it's sweet, it's sour, it's spicy. And I'm just not, you know, that's just something I like to do. But I, again, I, our kids aren't necessarily like that, but at least not now. All right. Well, there's always hope. There's a question yeah. about batch prep. What are you, what is your, do you have a protocol of what you usually batch prep on yeah. a basis? Not a, not a regular protocol, but to be honest, um, again, we kind of go through phases where for a while we're eating oatmeal and then for a little while we're not. And for a while we're eating quinoa and then for a little while we're not. And so, um, but things like oatmeal, seal cut oatmeal and quinoa, as far as grains, um, there's all kinds of soups and chilies and curries that we like to make. And we'll kind of alternate, rotate those. Um, and those are really nice because they freeze well, they heat up quickly. Um, those are the, those are the types of things we batch cook. Um, what else do we batch cook? Well, sometimes dressings, but those, you know, those are just like for the week, you know, but, um, I would say that's pretty much it. Sometimes I'll make some um, overnight, uh, well, not, not overnight oats, but um, chia pudding. I like chia pudding as well. That I might take to work as just an occasional, not treat, but just something a little different, a little unusual. Right. Well, here's a great question from Rebecca. Do your children ever cook with you? They do. Um, they love to cook. Um, but the thing is, is, again, they what they like and what I like. So they enjoy it. They, But again, we're... I kind of give them a little freedom to kind of explore because I want them to enjoy it. So I would, I would never really ask them to make this because I don't think, you know, uh, I don't think they would enjoy making it. 
maybe they'll enjoy the process, but not necessarily, you know, eating it. So, but so they'll, they'll cook other things. Like, like if one kid wants the mushrooms, you know, she might cook the mushrooms. If they want the tofu, they'll help with that. And, um, and the, uh, the air, well, the air fries or something that that's very easy, but they'll sit, they'll be my assistant for those kinds of things, you know? That's so cool. We like to, we like to bake too. Uh, they'll help. They, of course, what kid doesn't love baking, right? If it's a cookie or a, a muffin or something like that, but so they love to help, definitely love to help with that stuff. That's wonderful. Let's see if there's any more questions in the chat. Actually, I have one that was sent in. And I know you're really not here to answer medical questions because first of all, you can't be somebody's medical doctor, but I thought you could just answer this question generally. Like, okay, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, sure. it's, it's be, because uh, the question's from Loretta. She was recent, she's a uh, whole food plant-based for a year and a half, she was SOS free, but started adding salt. She was worried about iodine. She's 64, but she uh, was just diagnosed by ultrasound with a, a thyroid mass. So she's gonna see an endocrinologist. But her question is, and I think this is a good question in general for people when they see doctors, especially not every doctor's plant pace is, what questions do I need to be asking? I think this is a very good and general topic because people really don't know what questions to ask their doctor often. Sure, sure, that's a great question. Um, you know, in general, well, anyone with a thyroid mass, you would just want to make sure, you know, ask, you know, how do we know for sure if it's benign and that kind of thing. Although from, from what it sounds like just very briefly, and I can't really give like complete, you know, medical advice, but it sounds to me like it, it, there's an, uh, an understanding that this is an assumption here that this is a benign mass or cyst that's being followed. So I would just want to make sure that, and I would, I would, I would ask how often, um, you know, how often it would be recommended to be monitored. You know, a lot of times it's every, it could be every six months. It could be every year for a certain period of time. So I'd want to ask that and clarify that. And same thing with blood work too. How often should I get my blood work and, and should I be aware of any, you know, uh, supplements or medications that might cause problems with my thyroid and, Cause you know, I don't know. Um, it's pretty rare though, that that's the case, but it doesn't hurt to ask. And of course, um, of course on a plant-based diet, um, it's important that we get enough iodine, all of us, whether we have a thyroid condition or not. Um, and that's, that's a whole nother topic altogether, but it's related. And so, uh, whether it's through a supplement, whether it's through some seaweed, sea vegetables, or whether it's um, through a little bit of iodized salt. The, the good news about that is you don't have to have a lot of salt if you do have salt, if you choose to have salt. Um, so I, I hope that helps. Right. And the other thing I might suggest is to have a consultation with Dr. Alan Goldhammer, which is free because I've known people to fast the true north that have reduced the size of their masses. That sounds good. Yeah. You guys have any more cooking questions for the chef doc? Let's see. You should actually, you know, uh, be uh, like, maybe she, the, the, the date lady should put your picture on the chili sauce. There you go. And you know, I should just mention, I, since you brought it up again, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but what I love about it, not only is it's low in sodium, I mentioned that, but, and this probably goes without saying, but it is oil-free. This is it, by the way, again, it's oil-free, but it's also, you know, all the sugar comes from dates. And I just like that because I know that it's coming from a fruit you know, and it's not, uh, it's not high fructose corn syrup. It's not white sugar, brown sugar, that kind of thing. I agree with you. I uh, think these are awesome. Jail yeah. said, I think she might've missed what kind of tempeh you were using because there's many different kinds at the store. Uh, you know, I don't have the package right now. It is organic. This particular tempeh, it, it is with soy. Um, I mean, in general, if you can get organic, um, well, everything, that's great, of course. But um, soy, it's, it's felt to be even a little more important um, if possible because of some of the pesticides that they use. But so I do choose organic. Um, it's very rare that I can't find it. It's very, it's very easy to find these days. At least I don't have a problem finding it. And some of them, some of the tempeh is made with whole grains. Some are not. This particular one actually doesn't have whole grains in it, but uh, some are actually cooked like in the cake. There's actually grains in it. And I, I've had both and they're both, they both taste similar to me. So I don't, I'm not really picky. I get whatever my store carries or whatever I can find. And, and you know, for people like me yeah. who are allergic to soy, they make tempeh out of 
pumpkin seeds and hemp seeds now. It's called Pumpfu and Hempfu. No kidding. Oh my gosh. I did not know that. That is so That's interesting. Cool. Well, and that yeah. made a really nice comment saying she never heard uh, the estrogen connection explained so well because a lot of people just really believe, you know, that and people sure. are so afraid of them. So, sure. yeah, that was very helpful. Thanks so much. Let's see. I'm just scrolling, scrolling, looking through for questions for you oh and you know your your dog goldie is like uh, you know oh. really don't listen to one of the cutest dogs i've ever seen if she's around we love this yeah here let me let me bring goldie one yeah, sec i'll Perfect. entertain the troops while he's going away i'll just tell you who's on the show tomorrow back by popular demand another cooking demo with kiyomi she is the founder of say me who makes the decaffeinated sencha tea with the water, cold water process or water process and that coffee substitute that I love made from organic brown rice coffee. And she's going to be making amazing recipes. You got to say something to be true. Here's Goldie. Say hi, Goldie. Say hi to Chef AJ and everybody. Why is she so cute? <laughs> Thanks. She was actually, uh, I think, sleeping through the whole thing. So she... I don't know. She wasn't very entertained by what we were talking about, I guess. That face is, is just incredible. <laughs> anyway. All you, right. uh, Dr. <laughs> Lawenda, I know you eat wonderfully because I see your photos and I hope everyone will please follow Dr. Lawenda on Instagram and keep posting the link. So all it takes is a click, but I never really asked you about your exercise habits. Do you even have time as a biggie? biggie a busy That's a great doctor, question. Working doctor. Actually, um, no, that's a great question. And you know, it's so important to exercise. A lot of people, uh, if I can just make a couple general comments and then I'll tell you my specific situation. First of all, there's a misconception among so many patients and people out there that you need to exercise to lose weight. And that is really not true. In fact, most studies show that exercise results in very little weight loss. So you might wonder um, why exercise at all? <laughs> But there's so, and, and if you're wondering, that's a good question, but there's so many benefits. First of all, you live longer, <laughs> you have less pain, you have more energy, you have better moods, you have less risk of heart disease, less risk of diabetes, less risk of cancer, you have stronger bones. The, I mean, there's amazing benefits to exercise. Um, and so I hope that helps. But, and, and, and the other thing too, I want to mention just real quick, a lot of people say, oh, but I can't exercise. And so many people say, I can't exercise because I have a bad back, I have a bad knee, I have a bad hip, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what I share with them is that, you know, anybody can exercise. If you have a bad, um, if bad arthritis or bad joints or whatever it is, you can do chair exercises. Uh, there's so many wonderful YouTube videos about, with chair exercises. You can also go in a pool and do water aerobics or swimming and things like that. So back to me, uh, one of the things I try to do every day, I'm not perfect at, I'm not perfect at anything, of course, but uh, I try to do every day at work is because I bring my lunch and, and that actually has saved me a little bit of time, believe it or not, uh, rather than, again, I used to go out every day. Well, because I freed up a little bit of time, I try and go out for a walk uh, where I work. So again, that's not every day, but I try and do my best. But the other thing is um, I did buy an elliptical machine at home uh, which <laughs> during COVID, which actually I had to get it repaired recently. So it was down, but, but I try to do that most days every week. Um, and I have tried to do some, some upper body exercises at home as well. I don't belong to a gym at the moment. Um, but I've had, I, unfortunately I've had a little bit of a shoulder problem. So that's gotten a little bit of in the way of upper body, but, um, but at least I try and get my cardio in and, I'm going to try and see if I can do some other things to work around my shoulder problem, get my shoulder better. But did you tear your cuff? Did you tear your cuff? We could you know, I, I'm not sure to be honest. Uh, there was an injury and I, I've got it evaluated, but I haven't gotten to that point where I've had an MRI and it, it may come to that. Um, but it is getting better. It's just slow. Um, so we'll see. And if it is torn, at this point, if I have to have surgery, it's probably going to be a, I heard it's not a quick recovery, so I'm not really looking. I have heard ho nothing but yeah. horror stories from that surgery. And these are people. Yeah. So I Hello and, and welcome to oh my, my online book. Oh my God, what happens? My, I've been having That's a okay. lot of mystery talking today. Yeah. And mine took a year and a half to, to start wow. to even be able to do this. 
Yeah. yeah. It's a slow, slow process. Uh -huh. you know, it's interesting you mentioned, mentioned about exercise. So of course we should do it for a variety of reasons, but I guess you're familiar with uh, Dr. Herman Ponser, the exercise paradox in the book Burn, how he really proved that sure. exercise contributes very negligibly to weight loss. Not that we shouldn't right. do it, but we shouldn't right. do it for that reason. He's going to be a guest right. on the show, I believe, in August. Right. Fascinating stuff. Fascinating. It is. Stuff. It is. Absolutely. Well, gosh, you, you are so fun to watch and you're so creative in the kitchen. And I love that you gave the recipe. But like you say, you don't need a recipe to eat healthy, right. delicious plant-based food. You just need the ingredients. That's right. Sharon McRae says, I, with a purple heart, Dr. Lawenda. No. Hi, Sharon. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I you're heart the, you too. <laughs> you're the best, man. I mean, I wish everybody could experience what it's like to have a doctor like you. I bet you were even just as good even before you were plant-based, but now you have the secret. Well, it's, it's, it, it's, it's made such a big difference to how I practice, but also the reward that I get. Because it's it's very depressing to see people getting sicker and sicker and feeling they feel powerless. You feel I feel powerless, and now I feel like there's so much hope and um, and there's so much reward to be had on the patient side and on my side. And um, so it's I just wish we could we could all kind of live this way and and practice this way and wish the system could kind of change a little more quickly to kind of adopt what it is we're doing, what it is we're talking about, but. We'll get there hopefully someday. Well, what's great, I like, I'd like to see a book from you because now we know that there can be recipes in it. There you go. Yeah. You're I had a little more time. <laughs> Thank right. you. Thank you so you much. I know, it, I, originally, I know it took a long time to get you back on, but you were definitely worth the wait. So anything Thanks I so much. to support you, please. Thank you, Dr. Lawanda, for the amazing contribution you make to the world in general, but the plant-based community in particular. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. If you love these wonderful recipe demonstrations, come back tomorrow when Kiyomi from Say Me Tea is going to be using her amazing products to make delicious recipes. Thanks again, Dr. Lawanda. You're the thanks best. everybody. <laughs> all right. You want to say what's on that paper? I know. Oh yeah, yeah. Eat more plants, and you'll need smaller pants. You'll have less ills, and you'll need less pills. All right. We need that. Like need, that. that needs to be a teacher. Take care of. <laughs>